Wonderful. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen, and Rima and my colleagues. When I joined uh, Harvey Nichols, it is the department store that was owned by the Alpha International Company. I was the CEO of the company. The experience that I had walking through the halls of the store, that there was not one woman on the field, which basically means in sales, three floors, over 75 employees, not one woman, selling luxury goods to women. Um, when we studied the laws that were prevalent at the time, their place for women on the retail floor did not exist unless it was an exclusive ladies-only space, which which meant it was blocked from the outside and only ladies could come in, and we were a public department store. We began feminizing the workplace through uh, the back office, from our marketing department, logistics, we had women in the accounting, and we moved into the buying and the uh, marketing offices. Slowly, as we studied the laws, we realized that there are vacancies for women in the non-defined roles, so we began to include women in, that, in those fields. What was fascinating was two years into my tenure there, I was there for seven years, the Ministry of Labor began to change the regulations to allow women into retail. With uh, Stad Khaled Al Khadair, who I believe is in the room today, he founded a company called Glowwork with also a good friend of ours, Mona Busleman. Um, and Mona highlighted to me that perhaps I should meet this man, Khaled, who has a passion for how to integrate women into the workplace. And we put it off every so often, and by chance I met with him. And together we co authored a study on uh, the obstacles for women in the workplace. At that time, there was four major obstacles, obviously transportation, daycare, public perception and training. What has changed in that time is that the public perception has changed. We still need training, but more training is available. Daycare is something that if you look at the regulations with Ministry of Labor, they're absolutely working on. Uh, transportation, we all know, is a subject that is near and dear to all of our hearts. It is easier to get to work today, um, there are more opportunities. But what I find fascinating, Rima, is moving five years on, today I'm working with the General Sports Authority. My role there is to integrate women into sports. When I look at the opportunities for women to enter the workforce in specifically the field of sports, same obstacles, the only difference perhaps I would take out daycare and add facilities. Today, regardless of how many women we would like to involve, we still need women to train women, we still need women to train the trainers of those women. We need women to occupy and work in the facilities, whether it is from the actual technical capability of the sport all the way through to the support system of that sport. And the sensitive subject of gyms. So I'm very happy to tell you all that within the next two weeks the, the licensing of gyms will be uh, announced. Yes. And if you could excuse our delay, the delays really were because we need to connect ourselves as an entity from the technological point of view to all of our sister entities. To change policy is not something that one organization can do on its own. We are absolutely linked to the Ministry of Labor for Saudiization and Labor Needs. We're linked to the Baladiya, which is the municipality for rules and regulations. We're linked to Ministry of Interior in order to ensure the security um, and the structure that any Ministry of Interior, given the situation we're in globally today, must have. Um, and so our delay, and also with Ministry of Trade, rules and regulations do not exist in an island. Today, we as the General Sports Authority are connected. But I find it fascinating that no matter what sector you go to, if it is a new sector for women as the sports sector is, there will always be that vacancy, not because people don't want women integrated. That is not the case today. If we look at Vision 2030, the mandate is sports for all. All includes women. And sports for all means we absolutely must invest in the infrastructure from the human capital point of view and the physical infrastructure to facilitate, facilitate that, and that is actually what we're doing today. The value, the extreme value of sports in daily life for young children, for men and for women, is to create that second sense of community. Today we live in a disconnected society, we are online, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we are closer to these machines than we are to the people in the room with us. How many of you today are sitting here watching me speak through a lens that's in front of you, that's a camera phone? I'm here. These ladies are here. What are you doing? If you'd like to watch it, it will be on YouTube later, I assure you. You know? So now, let's take that. Let's take that and say, our young children. 
Our young children are experiencing life at a disconnect. If they're experiencing life at a disconnect and someone comes and connects emotionally and mentally with them, what do you think is going to be more attractive? So when we are saying it is vitally important to include physical fitness in your life, it is for your physical and your mental well-being. You need to have a sense of community. Look how beautifully everybody rallied to Majid Abdullah when he came here and every other individual. Regardless of whether you were a Hilal or a Nasr fan, once these people graduate and become the champions of this nation, we all rally around them. Imagine the value and the, the movement of sports to the soul of a young child. So when we say women must be involved in sports, is because we need their daughters involved in sports. They must have that same community connection that our young boys have today. And our young boys should have more choice than just football. With all respect to every single football player, they themselves have heroes in other sports. So we have to create that platform. The General Sports Authority, we are focusing on expanding mass participation and expanding the sports interests of this community. That is the investment we have to make. That is the investment that makes the mother, the father, the son, and the daughter speak the same language. And we say have a conversation at the dinner table. I would like to invite you all today, when you're at the dinner table, turn your phones over, have a conversation with your children. And I promise you, if you begin the dialogue on sports or games or pleasurable activities, your children will be so much more engaged with you have that conversation. We were discussing it in the back. Second conversation is tomorrow, let's go for a walk. The third conversation is mothers and daughters don't think I'm joking because my son is here and he does this to me all the time. Walk over with a football. Play. Just play. First of all, I say this with a lot of respect to all of the beauty and fashion bloggers because when I was working in retail, they were an absolute partner to what we do. But today I'd like to ask how many more ways could we find to contour the face of a woman? I would bet you not many. There are only so many angles and panels on your face. No wrinkles. So, now. No wrinkles. Yes. Slim. Yes. Moving from that, what I would say is... No eyes all over. Correct. If we could see how the fashion and beauty bloggers have actually monetized what they do, they've monetized the use of their time. So what we have now is a mild obstacle of lifestyle. So how comfortable will a young Saudi girl be to document her physical fitness routines and activities and exhibit them to the world to see to follow her path? What I think is missing is, and this is perhaps the right or wrong or, uh, platform to challenge the global fitness community to create a product that allows for a young Muslim or a young conservative woman to be able to practice her sport where she can stay modest but still feel comfortable going out and participating engaging. Nike took the first step by creating the hijab. Yeah. And what is the difference between the Nike hijab and the other ones that you have seen perhaps? And what is the difference you might say between a girl just wearing a long sleeve t-shirt versus something that's specifically made for her? If you are an athlete or a professional in the sports industry, you do need specific materials that are non-abrasive, that are moisture wicking, that are specified to your sport. So how is it the male athlete has that and the female athlete doesn't? So I feel if we could challenge the sports community to create a product for our young girls, we might be able to encourage more girls to be the physical fitness role models that we need. If you go on Instagram or on Facebook, you do see the food entrepreneurs. And they have absolutely embraced the vegan lifestyle. Why? I don't know. I feel you could be healthy without being vegan. However, if that's your choice, fabulous. But if we've managed to do this in food, surely we can do this in physical fitness. Look at and learn from other disciplines and see how you can apply that to yourself would be my recommendation to young people. Physical fitness is a market in the US that is worth over $50 billion. In Saudi, we've tagged it as 14 billion. All we need is for people to be engaged. So us as the sports authority, anybody that will listen to me, any sports industry in professional that will listen to me, I keep telling them, do not think of the Muslim woman as an exclusively Arab woman. Think of North Africa. Think of the expat Muslim communities in Holland. Think of them in England. Think of them all over the world. Think of Southeast Asia. The conservative community exists across the board, and I don't mean conservative of left, right, or any other. I just mean a community that prefers to be a little bit more modest in the way that they engage. But give me more opportunity. Give me the quality material you give a man. And what I'd like to have in the sports world across the world, not just in Saudi, the gender neutrality in product and the gender neutrality of facilities and the gender neutrality of machines and tools. Give us the option. You want us to engage, forcing us to engage by blocking us from engagement in sports activities is not the way to go. I, uh, perhaps I sound like I'm on the wrong platform, but sanctions in that capacity don't work. Inclu
include us, allow us to be included in policy, allow us to be included in tools and resources. That is how you'll get us there. And that is then how the young women of this community will be able to use positively all social media platforms. Right now we use words, we use Facebook, we use Twitter. Instagram is a profound mover and shaker. If you give us the opportunity with the correct tools, we'll use it too. We absolutely will. I think we're looking in the wrong places for our role models. I think we're not engaging with what's immediately in front of us. I find that we very much disregard the experiences of people that are older from us because we assume because they don't operate in this technical digital world that they don't have enough to offer us. My personal inspirations, my mother, my father, my grandmother, my aunts, um, they were not, they, they don't know Twitter. I they don't know Twitter. My mother knows WhatsApp. She WhatsApps us regularly. But um, she is not on Twitter. She speaks. She speaks to her sisters. She speaks to us. And the conversations we have with my mother and father are conversations that frankly are not the same quality that I have with my children. Because while we're speaking, the phone is ringing, something is beeping. And the experiences that they have, have such a value that I only recognize now, now as I get older that I wish I listened more I wish I asked more but the role models that we actually need today are people that are not on television that are people that are not on the radio or not on Instagram it's people that have actually achieved or accomplished something because that role model has to show you through success or failure how they've gotten to where they are and they also need to have a value system I find that we have lost track of the values that make us who we are. We have lost track of the essence of what is native to our nations. And where are they? Where are they? Online these values no. or we go back to the society or we find them in the media so, or at school. They are within the family construct as a foundation because that is where you learn your values. And once you learn the baseline of value, you begin to differentiate. Are the values that my family gave me impactfully 100% what I want or do I need to shift and add more? It comes from self-realization. It comes from experience and knowledge and engagement. You begin to see how others behave and you think, is this the way I would like to behave? Is this the way I'd like to be received by people? You judge, you look, and you gauge. But what we have locked is the ability for self-reflection, as if there's a shame to say the way I have been functioning and operating and thinking, perhaps today might need to change. Yeah. There is no change, sh shame in change. But because we've created these public identities on social media, that when you sway from what your thought was, it suddenly becomes shameful. You're suddenly pandering or you've suddenly lost your way. Well, no, I haven't. I have learned, I have educated myself, I've experienced, and my experience leads me to change the way I think. It leads me to change the way I engage and, 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 dis and have discourse. How many of you today are having the same conversation with people that you've had for the past 10 years? How many of you dread the moment that you see those people because it is the same? Wouldn't it be interesting of rather than dreading your moment with them, you say, how about we change the conversation? How about it? How about we bring something new to the table? Yeah. And if those people don't do that, find another group of people. There is no, no shame in evolving. And if I may say, that is what I see in Vision 2030. We are not saying things were wrong and now they're right. We're not saying everything we did for years and years must be put aside. We are saying that today, in order to operate in the world that we are in and where we would like to go, perhaps we need to have a clarification of exactly where we would like to go and see what are the tools we have with us. Yes. How do we change? It's fine. Okay. My request would be not specifically sports related, not specifically female related. My request would be is, today we are living as if today is the last day. It is not. We have a long way to go and God willing we'll be here for a while. As much as it's wonderful to enjoy the instant gratification of receiving things and getting things and experiencing things, the concept of financial self-sufficiency is so profoundly important that that is the only way that as a nation we will survive and then as an individual that we will survive. I truly and profoundly, and it is something that is near and dear to my heart specifically for women, and it is what I was doing before I took the role at the General Sports Authority, is educating women on the value of saving their money, of focusing on their health, because every dollar you spend on your health or real is a real you are not saving for your future. Assess where you would like to be, do the mental math to figure out what will the cost of my life be in 10 years, and save for it today. For young ladies, the value of that bag you've just bought, put that in the bank. For the gentleman, the new shoes, the new pen, the new car you've just purchased, 
put that in the bank because 10, 20, 30 years from now, you'll be so much more grateful for that independence that you will be for the gratification of that bag that you've received today. I truly hope that we learn the lesson of what we have learned as a nation and try to divest ourselves from the material things that we keep wanting to the things that we absolutely must need to have in the future. Your health and your well-being is in your hands today. Health and well-being, financial well-being, emotional well-being, physical well-being. So I would like to encourage this audience. We, you are the tweeters, I'm not. We have a Sheikh Majid here with us. He is a leader in this world. That's what I would love to convey. Tahiyat.